Don't be afraid, queer. Some of you may know me, some may not, but nonetheless, we're all here for one reason. And that reason is Barbara Millicent Roberts. Ever since I was a young child, I've followed Barbie's career, day in and day out. But then I asked myself, who is Barbie, not just the actress, but Barbie the character. You and I will be going on a journey throughout the world that both you and I know, but we will be looking through it with a new lens. And this journey begins in 1959. Hi there! Welcome to the Barbie Baking Show. I'm your host, and we'll be baking a Barbie cake. First off, we're going to start out with Barbie's essence. This is all of her personality in one mix. Let's put it in! Barbie Trinity. Her good looks, her intelligence, and her charisma. Charm and charisma. Back in BB, before Barbie, children were forced to play with baby dolls and assume the motherly role too early in life. There became a need for a new type of doll, something chic, something more mature. An ambitious doll little girls could look up to and see a role model for their future selves. To put it succinctly, a doll that was gorge, gorgetastic, and gorgelicious. Now babies, we're for babies.
Delicious one? I promise. So, for the past couple decades, we've learned more about Barbie and her past. We don't talk about her parents, Margaret and George, due to their complete irrelevance to the Barbie canon. However, Barbie has more family, starting with her sister, Kelly. Kelly was born in 1995. She first appeared in Barbie and the Nutcracker and appeared in many of Barbie's movies in the 2000s. The last movie she was in was Barbie, A Christmas Carol, 2008, where she disappeared. Barbie's second sister, Stacy, first appears in Diamond Castle, when she has bestie problems. I must go. Goodbye. Farewell. A couple years later, in 2011, two of Barbie's sisters appeared. Skipper, a screenager, a second child, and then there is Chelsea, the enigma. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> there are rumors that Kelly was either replaced by Chelsea or legally changed her name to Chelsea. I believe in the former. The last family member I will mention is Maleficent, I mean, Millicent? Barbie's aunt, who lives in Paris. She appears in a fashion fairy tale. Mamacent? Mamacent? <laughs> Whenever I feel emotions, I just play a little tune. <laughs> Let's talk about the real meat and pickles of this video. The Barbie Cinematic Universe. The BCU. Barbie became an actress, and a well-established one at that, early on, and she made a biopic about her high school experience called Barbie Diaries. 2006. Barbie in high school has three friends. There's Courtney, <laughs> she's a drummer girl, Tia slash Teresa. Just to set the record straight, I do wash my clothes. And Kevin. No. <laughs> oh, sweet girl hug. I so picked the right time to come in. Kev. Girl hug with Kevin? Girl hug without Kevin always. Come this way. There was also her high school bully and soon to be art rival in the acting world. Her Kev. We'll talk about. Raquel, later. <sighs> we get a glimpse into Barbie's past in this movie and her relationships. So, Barbie and Kevin got together at the end of the movie, but of course, as we all know, in high school, relationships, they never last. Soon the two broke up and Barbie met Ken. Barbie and Ken's relationship had its on and offs, but unfortunately, their biggest one was in 2004, aka the peak of Barbie's career. And they fell off. Ugh. 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 
Okay. In that time, Barbie starred in 10 movies. That included her high school biopic. There were some whispers and talks. Ugh! The movies in question were Barbie Princess and the Popper, Magic of Pegasus, Barbie Diaries, 12 Dancing Princesses, Island Princess, Christmas Carol, Thumbelina, Three Musketeers, and a Mermaid Tale. Notice how I only said 9 out of the 10. That's because this Barbie movie in particular changed Barbie cinema. Take it away, Andy! Barbie Diamond Castle otherwise known as the gayest Barbie movie of all time. Let's take a look. We've got Liana, played by Barbie, and we've got Alexa, played by none other than Teresa herself. In this movie, two best friends live in a cottage together in the woods, and they own a flower business. They are the original cottagecore lesbians. I mean, look how in love they are. Adorable. The movie opens with them singing a beautiful sapphic duet about how in love they are with each other. Take a look. If I could wish for one thing, I take the smile that you bring. Wherever you go in this world, I'll come along. Together we dream the same dream. Forever I'm here for you, you're here for me. I take the smile that you bring wherever you go in this world i'll come along together we dream the same dream forever i'm here for you you're here for me oh, oh, oh. two voices one song some notable lyrics in this beautiful heartfelt song. <clears throat> if I could wish for one thing, I'd take the smile that you bring. Wherever you go in this world, I'll come along. Together we dream the same dream. Forever I'm here for you, you're here for me. Two voices, one song. If that's not a love song, I don't know what is. Unfortunately, the movie does present two love interest characters for our main gay women. They are Jeremy and Ian. They're twin brothers, but they have drastically different personalities. Now, Jeremy, he's a geography nerd. He leads the little group around, make sure they don't get lost. Our man is gay and asexual, and I believe that after the movie, he settled down with a man and lived his life happily ever after. Ian, on the other hand, is a fuckboy. He kind of sucks. He's misogynistic and homophobic, and he keeps running in to his various ladies throughout the movie, and he, he's obviously ghosted all of them. So. He's the worst, and I believe after the movie, he started a men's rights YouTube channel and continued to get back together and break up and get back together and break up with Bertha for the rest of his days. In the movie, it is quite clear that Liana and Alexa want nothing to do with these men. They're just kind of there in the background being annoying. There's even a scene where Liana and Alexa board a rainbow bridge that retracts away from the men. Yeah. Liana and Alexa also adopt two strange dogs throughout the course of the film and take them in as their own. That is very gay. Not to mention, at the end of the movie, they're offered a beautiful castle to live in, and they opt to return to their one-bedroom cottage and continue their flower business. If you're still not convinced, observe their dresses transforming at the end of the film due to the power of true 
friendship. Do these colors look familiar? The lesbian flag was actually created after the release of this movie, but I choose to believe that its creator saw this film and was so inspired by Liana that she then created our wondrous lesbian flag. This movie is hugely influential to sapphic cinematography. I mean, this movie made me gay. I don't know how my religious parents allowed me to watch this. I wasn't even allowed to watch Disney Channel, and they let me watch this movie that literally turned me into a homosexual. I can't imagine this being- Whoops. Moving on. Man, all this space hopping whatever junk is exhausting. Let's watch some TV. Barbie. What the utilia? Welcome back to a new episode of Opening the Pickle Jar. <laughs> what is your name? Sage. My name is Andy Bates. My name is Maddox. What has been your favorite role that Barbie's played? My favorite role that Barbie was in is gonna have to be Diamond Castle. Liana, the lesbian. Like the one in the Diamond <laughs> Castle or just all, any of them? I liked Diamond Castle. I loved Mermaidia. Hmm. I think Mariposa. Who was your favorite gal character in all the Barbie cinematic universe? Oh, Teresa. My favorite woman in the Barbie cinematic universe is definitely Teresa. She's my favorite. I relate to her. I do that. I'm just gonna say Barbie. It's a it's a safe bet. Yeah. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. Favorite guy character. Honestly, Ken from Dreamhouse. You know, I don't have a lot. It's probably just Ken. I know that's kind of basic, so but Jeremy from yeah. Diamond Castle is not eating the Fair enough. Or okay. Bibble. Favorite animal sidekick? I'll know the peacock. The peacock. <laughs> Azul's just like, oh, yes. <laughs> Bibble. Bibble. Our Lord and Savior, Bibble. Who, in your opinion, is the best Barbie couple? Best Barbie couple, by far. And hear me when I say this. <laughs> <laughs> Teresa and Barbie. Honestly, the fairy couple from the crystal one. Yeah, from Mariposa and the Crystal Kingdom? Actually, it's called Mariposa and the Fairy Princess. Okay, bye. Yes. That one. <laughs> Liana and Alexa. They're gorgeous and they're gay. They're cottage core lesbians and I aspire to be them one day. Who had the best dress? Mariposa's orange dress was pretty cool. Well, obviously my heart is with the Diamond Castle princesses and their very iconic bisexual and lesbian dresses. I really liked um, Mermaidians. Um, but second best is gotta be um, Rose. I'm in princess dress with peacock feathers. It's gorgeous, and all the animals helps you create your process. Yes. Alina! Alina! <laughs> <laughs> Favorite villain? Definitely the horny weasel. Allow me, mistress. <laughs> Favorite villain? It's gotta be the mom from Island Princess, whose name is Ariana. Ariana. <laughs> <laughs> the medicine lady from the first one. Hedda. She has a little mole, she has a tall beehive haircut, and she's a drag queen, and she's slaying and sexy, and she sings a whole song about how she murdered her ex-husband. Sunday we were wed, Wednesday he was dead. Happily that put an end to us. She's iconic. Least favorite character? Honestly, that damn elephant. <laughs> Pika. You little bitch. Um, the horny dragon. Second least favorite is that one crow lady from the Swan Lake. <laughs> Pathetic. <laughs> she sucks. She sucks. She sucks. What has been your favorite Barbie moment? When my two favorite queens are on the Rainbow Bridge and they're just retracting away from the men and they're like, bye boys. <laughs> and it's such a sleigh and I love them. The rats one was kind of funny, not gonna lie. Oh, can you taste it? 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 Oh,
yeah. the depths of despair. Mm -hmm. It's all like the... Because she can't swim, and then she becomes a mermaid, and then Alina's like, whoa. Favorite Barbie movie? Barbie and the Diamond Castle. By far, it was my gay awakening. One of them. I feel like the grade school one, honestly, just like... Oh yeah, Princess Charm's one. Yeah. Yeah. Mermaidia. Favorite Barbie song? The Island one. The Island one when they're on the boat. By far, my favorite song is Two Boys and One Song from Diamond Castle. It's the gayest song in the world and I want to sing it as I would. I heard this one and I liked it. The You're Just Like Me. Favorite queer character? Hmm. Um, definitely Teresa. My favorite queer character, this is a hard one, but it's gonna have to be the barking cat, the Princess of Hopper, Megan Wolfie, and the trans icon. Alexa from Diamond Castle. Um, most Calico cats are actually female, and he is male in this movie. He also is a cat that barks. He's definitely trans. She sings the whole song about accepting himself the way he is, and loving who he loves, and loving who he is, and he's so gay, and I love it. What was your queer awakening? Bombastic side eye. Criminal offensive side eye. And that concludes this episode of Opening the Pickle Jar. Huh. That was out of something. Cute. Now back to your scheduled program. Let's talk about Teresa. Oh, Teresa. Barbie and Teresa knew each other since high school. They even began acting together after Barbie in the Nutcracker took off. Unfortunately, Teresa's very first role was in Swan Lake as the Fairy Queen. She was given prosthetics and makeup to make her appear older, which is problematic. Over time of being Barbie's supposed older co-star, she finally gained respect as an actress in her role as Alexa in the Diamond Castle. This is when rumors about her and Barbie began to circulate. Coming, Miss Threads! <clears throat> right, your hands or your mouth. Best friends. After Diamond Castle, Barbie was in three movies, two involving Teresa, and one involving her as the best friend role once again. And after the release of A Mermaid Tale, Barbie and Ken got back together after 11 years. Which left Teresa in the dust to play the ditzy best friend role in Barbie's movies. We can infer that she acquired a drug addiction due to her erratic change in behavior. It was sapphic, yet tragic. Akin to her Romeo and Juliet. Ew. Speaking of fairies, we interrupt this program with some breaking gay news. After the Barbie and Teresa scandal, inside resources have uncovered a shocking revelation. One may even call it a fairy secret. Barbie and Raquel have been spotted canoodling. Take a look at this footage taken by the paparazzi. Oopsie! Guess old habits die hard, girlfriend. We've also acquired this photo from a reliable source. Look at their wings. They're pansexual and bisexual. Barbie and Raquel acquired these wings through the power of friendship to free themselves from captivity and rescue Barbie's beard, Ken, from an evil very arranged marriage to Princess Graziella. Oh, that reminds me. We've also received this footage of Ken, which confirms he is a homosexual. Take a look. Hey! La la la! What a fruity man. All that to say is all of us at Gay News Central are thoroughly invested in this enemies to lovers dynamic between Barbie and now a word from our sponsor. Fairies are bigots. And 
only you can stop it. That's right. Fairies have a hierarchy. Fairies at the top, wingless fairies, tiny fairies, and fairies of different species in the middle, and non fairies at the bottom. In the past, wingless fairies were ostracized and bullied by their winged peers. You think what they do to their fellow fairies is bad? Think about what they do to humans. One prime example today is the city of Los Angeles. In this society, fairies kidnap humans and marry them so the humans can become their property. And they never, ever, ever, ever get to go back to the human world. <laughs> this is unacceptable and things must change. And you can be an activist in your home, in your Walmart, in your post offices. <laughs> Deep down, we all have dreams, real or not. And that's the real fairy secret. I lie. I'm the person in the video, and I sponsor a group of message. Whoa! Must have spun myself into another pickle. <laughs> She represents renewal. Just like You okay? Oh, yeah. Oh, what were you talking about again? I was just talking about like dating and shit, and then you kind of zoned out. Oh, yeah, that that's just hard. Yeah, it's just, you know, a matter of finding the right person. Are you psychic or something? Oh, no, just stay on it. Right on. This is a nice place to be. I mean, right here, in this moment, with you. Can I just do this right?
lemonade. Oh, thanks. Sorry, the only cups I have are pickle jars. Oh? <laughs> Don't worry, it's just coconut syrup. Oh my god, I love coconut. Here. Delicious. So what else? What else what? What else do we have in common? First, we're both wearing blue. That dress is such a slay, by the way. And we both like coconut syrup. It's the best flavor by far. What else is there? What? You know what, I bet that you like Taylor Swift. Yeah, so I'm just trying to determine whether you're in love with me or if you're trying to steal my identity. That's what I said. Bye. Wait, you can't just end a conversation like that. Join me on the couch then. So what are your thoughts on Barbie? Honestly, Diamond Castle is my favorite. Oh my God, that's the best one. I know, right? Oh my God, oh my God. Oh, definitely. You know what happens up here? Sexual tension and sexual resolve. Wow, how did you know? <laughs> I have to find out the little things about you so I can steal your identity, of course. <laughs> so what actually goes on up here? Conversations. Just conversations. What kind of conversations? The kind that help you figure someone out. You know, it's a matter of finding the right person. So what are you trying to figure out about me? Isn't it obvious? I'm trying to find out if we're compatible. Like dating? Yeah, like like dating. Oh. You okay? I'm gonna go. Barbie and Raquel settled their differences and were able to save Ken. They were enemies to lovers. I know what I have to do. I know what I have to do. Oh, huh. that's new. Changed our luck, I can see light in a new 